boys and girls, here are the art projects we did in our Zoom classes today. Cut the paper about four inches by four inches. Go ahead and fold it into a triangle. Cut off the sides that extend beyond the edges of the triangle so that you create a perfect square. Open it up. Now fold it the other way into another triangle. Make a crease. Now you're going to fold each edge up towards the top point. Fold those points to the sides and that's your first flower. We're going to go ahead and do the process again with another color, creating several flowers. Make your triangle. Cut off the extra on the edges. Fold it again. Fold in towards the center on each side. Now fold the tips going out to the sides. Now you have another flower. If you kind of pull open the front of it, you'll puff the flower up a little bit, making it look more 3D. Fold your triangle, cut off the extra, open it up, fold the triangle the other way, fold towards the center on each side, fold the points out to the sides and puff it up. Now you have three flowers. You can stop there or you can create more. Now let's do the stems. Cut strips of green paper, however many for however many flowers you made. Fold them in half. This way the stem will be 3D. You could glue it flat on your paper but that's not as interesting. Since this is 3D, you will not be able to glue the stems down. You'll need to tape them to your paper later on. Get a large piece of rectangular paper, fold it across, making a triangle. You'll notice there's a rectangle shape at the bottom. Cut it off. Open it up. Fold a triangle towards that center crease. Same on the other side. Now fold out, similar to how you did this with the flowers. Now it's time to put the stems inside of this bouquet paper. Tape those stems down inside of that folded paper so you don't see the tape. And you can use a glue stick or Elmer's glue to put the flowers at the top. I'm arranging it right now. Let's make a bow for the front. If you fold your paper in half, you can cut out a shape that looks like one half of a bow. When you open it up, you'll have two symmetrical sides to that bow. Place it where you would like it. If you have any kind of ribbon, you could tie that around the center. If you're using curling ribbon, you can use scissors, place it under the curling ribbon, pull, and you'll get a nice spiral. Now you can glue this to the front of your project. If you have other materials like pipe cleaners, anything like that, you can also use that. You could also use muffin cut papers and fold those to make flowers if you wanted. 
You could glue buttons on your project, anything you have. For our second project, you need to know the flower for each member of your household's birth month. I'm first showing you a technique that you will use later in this project in your background. You can put some water onto your paper, put some watercolor over that, sprinkle some salt on, and you can let it dry. When it dries, it becomes almost a tie-dye look on your paper. You can sprinkle additional water or additional watercolor on top of that salt to make it spread out a little bit more. You'll be using that technique later on in this project if you choose for your background. The first thing that you'll do is you need to sketch onto your paper the flowers that you're using. You're going to be using one flower per person in your household. So whatever flower represents their month of their birthday, that's the flower you're going to draw. You want them to be next to each other so that they look as though they're in a bouquet. You might have several family members with birthdays in the same month. That's completely fine. You could change the color of the flowers if you wanted for each one or keep them the same, whatever you like. Now, when you're sketching on your paper, this is not a fantastic sketch. It's merely a guide for your paint when you get ready to watercolor. Make sure that you are drawing lightly. Unlike me, I'm drawing dark so that you can see. You wanna make sure that when you're drawing, you erase the extra lines as you go. You don't want them showing through your watercolor. When I started drawing each flower, I started with a large oval shape. I put the ovals where I wanted the flowers on my paper, and that just represents the size of the flowers I was drawing and kind of gives me an idea of where I'm placing everything so I don't have to erase too many things as I go. I fill in those ovals with the types of flowers for my family members. And remember, it's just a rough sketch, something quick to guide you when you paint. If you're unsure of how to draw a particular flower, you can always look online. There's lots of tutorials. If you write what flower you're looking for, you can probably find a drawing guide or you can leave a note for me in our classroom and I will put one there for you. Make sure that when you are drawing, you look at the types of leaves each flower has. They likely have different leaves from the other flower, so you want to make sure you have the appropriate leaf with each flower. Remember to draw lightly. Go around your piece with an eraser. Erase all those extra lines that you will not need. Once you start with the water and the watercolors, it seals that graphite to the paper and you can no longer remove it. So this is the time to get rid of it. I like to do a little color mixing to get different colors. I don't wanna necessarily use the yellow that it came with, so I'm mixing them together for my daffodil. Start with a light color when you're doing your first layer of watercolors. This yellow that I started with is coming out a little darker than I'd hoped for. So I'm going to go a little lighter as I work from there. To lighten it, you can just add a little bit more water to your paintbrush. And we're just doing our first layer of the watercolor. So you want to start with your lightest color and shade first. When you're working, if you accidentally make a mistake with watercolors, maybe you drop some paint where you didn't want it, or it just goes beyond where you wanted it to go. If you take your clean brush, scrub a little bit of water over it back and forth, and then tap it with a Kleenex or a paper towel, you will lift the paint up from the paper and it's as though it erases it. Just remember that tip because it's very likely at some point You'll drop some paint in an area you didn't want to. 
Now I'm going to go around the edges of the petals with a darker yellow. I'm going to be blending that in, but I do want the edges to stand out, so I'm making them a little bit darker. You can see I got a little bit too much yellow on that one, and I'm going to use that technique I just talked about. And you can see that it lifts the color right up. It's kind of cool. Now you can see the pencil marks through my project and that's really because I'm just demoing this for you. This is not a work of art. This is just a learning piece for you. Hopefully on your paper, your pencil is not showing through. If it is, take a little break, lighten it up with your eraser before you continue painting. Now, when you're painting, I really just kind of skipped finishing that flower so that I could move on to show you a few more things. You may want to use a light orange or a different shade to go over your flower petals to give it more depth. On these flower stems, I'm painting them green. Some will be darker, some will be lighter. I may mix some of my greens to together. I might add a little bit of yellow over some of them. Something that you can do to make your stems look a little more 3D is fold up your Kleenex very narrowly and you can dab your Kleenex in the center of the stems, lifting paint from just the very center and that'll create it looking a little bit lighter so that it looks as though the stem is rounded. So it would be a little darker on the edges, a little lighter in the center. Some things you may wanna consider when you finish with your watercolor. Some people like to use a fine tip Sharpie and outline their work. Consider if that's what you would like or just leave it as is. <laughs> 